Um, it's always been cannabis, right? So back in the day when we talked about, you know, people, um, you know, using paper uh, to write the constitution or make money or every farm in, in the country, in the US had to pay its fair share of taxes with hemp. Um, it was actually cannabis. Cannabinoids as well as other elements play a, a reaction role in the brain, an antagonist or an agonist type of reaction right, you produce. And the really cool thing is when you produce more anandamide in your body internally without antagonizing the release of it, you feel happy. You know, a lot of the a lot of people in the medical or in the marijuana advocacy side, um, they're, they're, they're playing politics too much. And I, I could be very political, but this is a plan. There's no, there's no room. Everyone, welcome to an episode of Talk CBD. And with me is Dan Watkins, the CEO of Soul Cell. And I'm so um, honored to have him here with me to talk about um, CBD, THC, anandamide, maybe a little bit of 2AG, and also about medical marijuana and the CBD community and where we see things going in the future. So thank you for joining me with me, Dan. I uh, appreciate you um, spending this little 420 with me for a little bit. Um, yeah. How's it going? CBD is anti-inflammatory. <laughs> yeah, you know, this is why we tell people, um, well, biggest shift I've, I've seen personally in the industry ever since COVID started, there's a lot of people smoking um, hemp and CBD flowers. Um, yeah. It's And so any company that really focus on the marketing right can make a really good difference right now in the industry when it comes to flowers. And so um, I mean, it's so great to see people open up, you know, and um, this is why I hope um, um, 420 more, more of us actually talk about um, hemp and um, the benefits of it. Because, you know, from my the little research I've done and my understanding is um, a lot of people smoking hemp back in the days, you know, a lot of slaves and things like that. So it's wonderful for us to be able to have this platform to educate more people on not just always smoking THC, but um, Maybe try some CBD once in a while to help you get that information. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. In fact, you know, I, I think uh, the, the term hemp probably came out around the 70s or 80s. Um, it's always been cannabis, right? So back in the day when we talked about, you know, people, um, you know, using paper uh, to write the Constitution or make money or every farm in, in the country, in the U.S., had to pay its fair share of taxes with hemp, um, it was actually cannabis. But uh, in our terms, in our way of looking at cannabis, um, we, we consider cannabis very high levels of THC. And to me, that's a, uh, um, it's a political way of, of, of calling the plant um, all things, not just marijuana. So a lot of cannabis or recreational, I think the whole, I think the whole key for most people, most advocates is to have recreational or adult use, right? Um, and you see the different stages in different states, it starts off as medical, then it becomes adult, and then it becomes yeah. recreational. And um, one of the things you need to look at is why is, there, why is there an issue? And the level of THC creates this delineation between marijuana, hemp, and, and, and things that could be considered a drug um, and or could be considered medical. So you look back in the day, the THC levels are really low. It, it was a lot of CBD. It was hemp because it wasn't high in THC. So that that, that was the point. Yeah, and it's um, it's interesting to see. I was uh, doing a little research the other day on terpenes and cannabinoids, and mm -hmm. one of the things they talked about how cannabis now is so different from the sixties and seventies, where in the um, in the sixties and seventies was more from medicinal, and people wasn't getting as high as um, as it is now, and I think it's because of um, the high amounts of CBC that was in the uh, cannabis back then, and a lot of it had to do because of the region where the strains was coming from, which is the tropics. And they say any of the uh, tropic strains, um, land, land, I'm saying right, land trace, right, um, strains are higher in um, CBC than it is in um, THC. 
And so that was very interesting for me to, to see uh, when you come studying um, the history of this plant. Yeah, no, the numbers are pretty clear. It's like um, for as long as we've been able to measure the amount of THC in cannabis, uh, 1940s, mid 1940s, it, it hovered around five to six, seven percent, um, all the way up to the 70s until uh, we really started learning. It's like with the whole, uh, you know, LSD thing. Um, we, 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 we started learning that cannabinoids as well as other elements play a, a reaction role in the brain, an antagonist or an agonist type of reaction. Some things antagonize and make the brain release things like serotonin and mel uh, melatonin is also an, antag yeah. an antagonizing hormone. Um, endorphins, dopamine, and cannabinoids. Um, which cannabinoid? Anandamide. Oh, okay. So anandamide is what we feel when we're high. It's a natural cannabinoid. Um, how do we get that? How do we get to that point? Um, we need an, an exogenous cannabinoid, such as tetrahydrocannabinol, uh, THC. When THC enters the body, it and it antagonizes the CB1 receptor to release anandamide. Well, if you keep releasing anandamide, what happens, Ben? After three or four days, you're hitting the bong and dabbing like crazy. You're like, I'm not getting high. Yeah. Right. Back in the day, people were smoking all the time. And they're, like you said, there was another level of CBC and CBD, cannabinoids, other terpenes, and the THC levels were low. And what we now realize, right around 1993, when we discovered our endogenous cannabinoid system, there's really only two processes, CB1 and CB2. And CB1 is neural, and CB2 is more physical to some degree, right? And But they also play a role in the antagonist and agonist type of reactions in the brain. So we realize now when we discovered CB2 that CBD helps to produce anandamide, that CBD produces anandamide. So I, it, I, it just makes sense. If you like to get high, if you like the feeling of anandamide, you should always try to keep a balance of the amount of anandamide that you have in your body. That's where CBD plays such an amazing role because you might suppress the CB1 receptor from releasing anandamide. So people smoke hemp and they're like, I don't feel anything, right? Well, we could talk about the CBD thing. What I think people should do is really start looking at medical marijuana, right? For medical reasons to get high levels of THC and high levels of anandamide because that's all the dispensaries grow anyway. It's just, it's just all THC. And, and there's not a lot of medical benefit to me if you don't have a balance. Um, but if you're going, if you are a medical patient, if you are going for the very strong stuff and you do enjoy the feeling of anandamide, the feeling of high, that's great. Replace it with CBD. Well, that was isolate. Replace it with CBD. Now you're going to balance out the amount of anandamide you release and the amount of that anandamide you produce. And the really cool thing is when you produce more anandamide, in your body internally without antagonizing the release of it, you feel happy. And that's why a lot of people think and say CBD makes them happy. And once you're happy, you don't need to be high necessarily. Um, you can you can enjoy it a little a little differently, right? So it's sort of like, um, you know, you drink a beer, there's alcohol in beer. You can enjoy the beer and the terpenes and the cannabinoids and beer from the hops and things like that, and have a little bit of alcohol. You don't need so much of it anymore because there's this balance. I'm really happy that hemp and CBD are you know, very, very legal now. In fact, uh, it's primarily off the, off the schedule of uh, uh, DEA-listed narcotics, uh, CBD is. Um, USDA is behind CBD, or hemp, really. Uh, hemp and CBD, because the, the THC is still of question. I would hope that a lot of people in the marijuana community start to embrace CBD for some of the reasons I just mentioned. You'll enjoy your marijuana. You can call it marijuana. You want to call it cannabis? Call it cannabis. It's two different things. Cannabis is hemp and marijuana. But if you enjoy marijuana, medical, recreational, say it. Call it marijuana. Don't be afraid to. Call it hemp. Don't be afraid to do that either, right? But the two elements in it, CBD and THC, they need to work together. How you do it at different times is, is very important to what you want to get out of it. If you want to enjoy kind of fun, recreational, great. You can't do that every day. Chemically, you're going to run out of anandamide and you're going to 
Crash. Yep. Crash. <laughs> a CBD will bring it right back up. <laughs> That's so true. Because when you were talking about the alcohol, it reminded me of, you know, when you get that, that, that one beer and you have that, 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 that little buzz? Yeah. And it feels really good. Yeah. And it's just right. But, but when you have too much, you end up crashing, you're getting really drunk. You don't know what's going on. So it's, I look at it as the same thing. You know, you get enough, the body, you know, feels really good. And you get too much, if anything, the body either flushes it out or it becomes a problem where you end up, like you said, crashing. Um, Crash, yeah. Or, or within a few days, your 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 balance is off. You know, some people will say, oh, I don't, I, I want to smoke as much. I want to eat as high as possible. Well, great. Yeah, I, I can see that. If a kid got a hold of this and was really high, you know what they say in California? Give them CBD. If somebody has a panic attack because of too much THC, give them CBD. It's amazing because with CBD, with, 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 when you have THC and CBD at different times, you could do it at the same time with hemp, right? And you'll get like this balance effect in the body. But I believe, and a lot of doctors, especially in California, our pain management doctors are saying, give high levels of THC, then CBD. Because what the CBD will do is start to take the THC out of the brain, the anandamide out of the brain. Because if you're just smoking THC and just start st stimulating your brain, it's going to stay in your brain. The purpose of medical marijuana, the purpose of THC as a painkiller is to get it into your body. But it doesn't stay in your body. It stays in your head unless you have CBD. <laughs> <laughs> and it was, so I can attest to that. Um, in 2018, December, I was in Vegas, and I went to the MJBizCon, and after one of um, the um, events, I got invited back to um, a party, and so I was maybe, what, 22, 23 stories up, and I have a fear of heights, and so I was okay the first, um, you know, 20, 30 minutes, but when we started smoking, and then after it hits me, I was like, I started getting really high. Yeah. And you know, when, you do, when you smoke somebody else's stuff, it's not what you're used to. And so I started panicking a little bit. And this is why I'm like, I'm always grateful. I traveled, I had a, a CBD um, vape with me. And so I was just there vaping for about 20 minutes. And yeah. after, I think maybe 30 minutes or so, I just came down. And then I was able to even drive home regularly just because I'm so glad that I had um, the CBD vape on me. Yeah. So, so um, how wonderful CBD really is. I mean, in, I think in Israel, uh, the soldiers carry around a pellet of about 500 milligrams of CBD in case they get hit in the head um, with, a, with, a, with uh, you know, some, something from an explosion. Uh, they may get a concussion. The CBD works that fast by hitting the brain. So everything that stresses us out from addiction to pain to pain is all in the head. And so... Um, THC is also in the head. Right? <laughs> and if you want to, and, and it, it can it can be too much. It, um, it may not be enough, right? Whatever, but it's in the head. If you want to get that out of the head, and if you want to get a true entourage effect, if you want to get the, the the THC effects into the spine, um, and and I think you know a lot of the a lot of the people in the medical or in the marijuana advocacy side, um, they're 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 playing politics too much and I, I could be very political but th this is a plan there's no there's no room for politics right so so using things like stigma um and, and saying those kinds of things to me what it does is it alienates people um from from having any say in the matter and saying and other people are saying well we know everything that needs to be said about it because it works for me right great 30 percent of the population enjoys marijuana they may not do it every day. They may not do it every month, but they will do it. The other 70% that don't, they might be 70, 80 years old. It's not like they never tried it before. They know how it makes them feel. Everybody knows how it makes them feel. Um, then the other thing is that if you look at the letter between the FDA and the DEA, May 2018, which I talk about it all the time because I'm so, so surprised most people don't do this. The FDA and the DEA are A-OK -okay with cannabis. A-OK -okay with it. The problem is if it interacts with alcohol, you have another major issue. Alcohol is their major concern. So we were just talking about drinking beer, right? Back in the 90s, right? We talked about a 40 and a blunt. That's what I should talk about in you know, yep. hip-hop songs. That's all she wants is a 40 and a blunt. 
140, you may not get drunk. One blunt, you may not get too high. A 40 and a blunt, and you're, you, you combine this interaction. And so you, you can't treat cannabis by itself. And, and when people talk about medical marijuana or recreational marijuana, what they're talking about is primarily THC. They're not talking about the balance that it used to be 30, 40 years ago. And they're hardly ever talking about CBD at all. They're just talking about THC. And, and that that's, I mean, some states are legal. I don't think it's going to happen in New Jersey. They, they say they're going to vote on it. We have too many issues like, uh, uh, um, you know, addiction and, and, and opiate deaths, uh, alcohol. Alcoholism is probably the thing that kills all of us. You mix the two together, you have some deadly combinations. I have a question. So what are your thoughts on um, since the problem is alcohol when it comes to the DEA and the FDA, how will they feel when Anaisa Bush and all the cores and all the large beer companies done, if they finally figure out how to combine THC and um, alcohol in, in these cans? Like, do you think they'll have a problem with it? Or do they, do they say like it has to be uh, five milligrams of THC in the whole, in the whole um, container um, to dilute the amount of um, TC in there. You think that's what they're going to do, or do you think they made it tell them no? Every, everything depends on how the government, you know, views its framework. But um, when it comes to when it comes to beer, right? Because beer uses hops, and hops have cannabinoids and terpenes, and and it's almost the same plant as canna and cannabis, right? Canna the, the father of cannabis, and um, or the grandfather, something like that. Um, I, I think what beer companies would probably do is have CBD and THC. Because um, I, I think the argument of drinking THC is, is silly, right? It's not water soluble. It's not, right. you know, you don't want to add it. Like, you know, like, so if you have a more complete, you know, derived liquor that's brewed, and I know you, I know you did a thing on brewing coffee. I, don't, well, I, I didn't get a chance to see it yet, but I uh, <laughs> talked about it all the time. Yeah, yeah, I know you put it up yesterday, or you put it up today. Got to check it out a little bit. Um, but if, if you brew cannabis, I think you're going to have a natural tea of cannabis. See, when you smoke it, whether you smoke hemp or marijuana, it goes right into your blood, right into your lungs, right into your heart, then right to your brain. When you when you digest it, it it permeates into your body a little differently. Yeah, you get a higher feeling with Delta 9 process in the liver, things like that. But the body starts to digest it and take hold of all the different pieces of it. And, and that's why I think, you know, when you drink wine or you drink beer, you, you get a much more complete, you, you don't feel so unhealthy. It, 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 it's actually yeah. considered healthy to some degree. It's the liquor that drives things a little crazy, right? It's the dabs that can drive things a little crazy. It's the edibles that can drive. Those, that's, that, that's the issue with cannabis. It needs to be in balance. I say it all the time. I get a lot of slack for it. Um, but I'm totally against, in my state, against dispensary weed. Um, I, I, I think that it's nice. It's fun, right? But it, it, it's not natural. It's not natural. <laughs> and it's hard to make the case for cannabis being so healthy for you when the other non-natural stuff it's not really showing great health promises, um, you know, because because you take out all the terpenes, you take out all the uh, take out all the CBD, and now you derive just the THC and the terpenes, which is which is nice too. The terpenes actually slow the THC down. So even though we're talking about um, you know the different cannabinoids reactions, one's one, one's anti-inflammatory, one's uh, psychoactive. And when you have high psychoactive activity, anxiety or high or whatever, you know, the, the anti-inflammatory kind of slows that down a little bit. So that's nice. I saw CBD provides balance with, with THC. The terpenes do something really, really cool. They actually agonize the CB1 receptor. So as THC antagonizes the CB1 receptor to release anandamide, the bliss molecule, mm. where you feel high. Um, the terpenes kind of build up the anandamide, agonizing it. In, in pharmaceuticals, that's a slow release. So you see this all the time with pain pills, right? If you uh, uh, break your arm, you might get five milligrams of Percocet and 325 milligrams of Tylenol. Eventually, and Tylenol is the anti-inflammatory, the Percocet is the, 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 is the painkiller releaser, yeah. you know, whether it's uh, serotonin or dopamines and things like that. Mostly, mostly dopamines and a serotonin mix. Um, but the higher you go in the Percocet or the Oxy, 
the lower you go in the anti-inflammatory, and now you just have all this um, uh, opiate, right? So what do they do? They encode it with a very thick, thick, thick kind of layer of goo or whatever the hell it is. So as, as it's sitting in your stomach, you don't get 30 milligrams of oxycodone in five minutes. You get your 30 milligrams over six hours. So a really cool thing about dispensary read, I should say, is that they have a great way of expressing terpenes in the flower. So you're really getting a terpene and THC mix. And what the terpenes will do, because that's high quality, it'll allow the THC to flow out nice and slow. So you get a much more enjoyable feel. Oh, I'm glad you brought it up. So I've been working on an article. So um, this was, a, it was a month, like a month ago, um, a study came out that stated, they did like to compare the um, medical marijuana and dispensaries. And they saw that from their perspective, it's um, they recommend having more CBD to um, to medical marijuana because the high amounts of um, like you said um, dispensary um, um, weed or marijuana it's so um, potent that it's um, it's not it's too much for people who look for pain management in a yeah. sense. The general pop population who wants to go get medical, they always recommend um, um, hemp or at least something that has higher amounts of CBD um, because it's seen up to like twenty five percent average. And TAC, and based on this the study that it did, it, um, they conclude that it's just it's not it's too much for people, the average person, for when it comes to pain management. Yeah, and, um, it's um, and this is where too, uh, I had a talk with a friend of mine about this, and I'm always saying uh, that um, even though because students for for twenty, I look at going back in time, the is burning bush. Right <laughs> no, no, not right right now. <laughs> You know, in ancient times, I always say that it, the burning bush is um, it's, it's cannabis, you know, it's a, the plant. And if you look at it now, it's so much, all the genetics, they're, they're pumping it with all these um, chemicals because they have to grow it indoors and to prevent um, spider mice and all, and all the mold and moisture issues. The, yeah. You know, yeah, you get uh, high amounts of um, TC, high amounts of turpins, but in nature, nature, which is supposed to be pure, and knows what it wants um, is never like that, and th that's why I can say like, uh, look at my uh, my stepdad. He's he loves his um, he's just regular he's a regular weed. He's been smoking forever, and I've never once seen him go to the doctor. Yeah, you know <laughs> and he's like seventy five. You know, I think he's seventy five. But, but is that. it but is it from a dispensary? No, he they, they just throw it out in the garden, you know, wherever. And that's you know, the point. That's, that's the point. Because yeah. I really haven't seen too many medical cases yet from people from dispensaries that change their medical status. Um, in fact, it's quite the opposite. Uh, if they can't get access to it, their medical status uh, uh, is worsened. It's funny, you know, when we talk about um, how uh, it's, it's masking, you know, the um, TAC. Uh, it is. Yeah, so you're right. So we, we, have, um, we have a couple thousand customers. When I started this company, um, I, uh, I, I looked at CBD as being a bolt-on to almost every kind of medical issue that someone has. And then I took a few medical issues like cancer, diabetes, or autoimmune and realized, wow, CBD has a role in those, but not to um, uh, make somebody feel better from the pain, because that's what pharmaceuticals do. See, if you have diabetes, if you have arthritis, if you have, what are they going to do? They're going to give you a drug that makes the pain go away for a little while, right? Yeah. But it comes back. It doesn't really change the problem. Um, you have to change the problem. If you have cancer, you have to fight it. Not Nothing they can give you can fight it. So, so looking at how people treated marijuana and cancer, I, there's a couple of, couple of studies and I'm very, very fascinated with tumor shrinking. But tumor shrinking and, met and, and metastasis are two different things. And and or creating benign cells and you know failure of uh, uh, cellular apoptosis. Those are different things, right? If you have a tumor, yes, it looks like THC may shrink the tumor. But we all have the ability to have cancer. Um, and 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 as people have cancer and and, and smoke marijuana. It's not the THC that makes them feel better. I mean, it's the THC that makes them feel better. And feeling better is important 
for your therapy, right? The entourage effect. You need to have a better attitude. So you're not feeling anxious and you're feeling a little bit nicer and more relaxed. Okay, great. Um, but the, the, uh, uh, the cancer doesn't change unless the person changes some part of their nutrition. They have to change. They have to eat the right things now. They have to lower their acid. One of the things for people with cancer is you have to lower your acid levels, higher alkaline levels. You see all types of alkaline water nowadays. And I'm a big fan of drinking baking soda. I tell everybody that I know for years, drink baking soda, drink baking soda, drink baking soda, because everything we do is acid-based. Everything we eat is acid-based. Everything our body produces is acid, and cancer lives in acid. Um, does THC help with that? Not really. Um, does CBD help? Yes. CBD actually does help because it helps to initialize the sleep process. Does it make you sleepy? I've been taking CBD the last three, four hours. I'm not sleepy at all. In fact, I'm pretty wound up uh, <laughs> to the point CBD doesn't make you sleepy. It gives, it gives your cells um, more breathing room because it's lowering the inflammation everywhere in your, in your muscle tissue, in your, in your bones, um, your pain cells. Your, your circulatory system, your immune system. Um, and, you know, people talk about the immune system all the time. Uh, the immune system is actually what hurts us for most diseases, um, even cancer. Uh, in cancer, you, your immune system is a little overactive. Your white blood cells go too high. You get, it's very painful. Um, and so what do they do? They give you chemotherapy and kill everything, and then, then you have to rebuild back up. But every autoimmune disease... Um, and, and any, any disease that looks like an autoimmune disease, like lupus or Lyme disease or rheumatoid arthritis, um, these are all forms of your immune system attacking itself. CBD helps to lower that inflammation. So THC um, is still more on the pain side. It, it doesn't seem to have the same anti-inflammatory effects. And people get this wrong, and they got to be careful. When you say cannabis, you're talking about five, 600 elements, not just THC and CBD and 115 cannabinoids. So when you try to treat a disease, um, you, you, never, you never know what exactly that one thing is going to do. Medical marijuana is very, very high in THC, has hardly anything else, lots of terpenes, and no, no, no cannabinoids that, that make any, any measurement level. Um, it's, it's not really working. CBD has been working. So I, I think uh, the dispensaries, they, they have to start to, to, to grow more one-to-one -one strains. People don't like it. Um, Charlotte's Web does, has done wonders. It's a one-to-one. -one. Um, Indica's a one-to-one, but those, those are all kind of funny. Medical marijuana community don't have doctors to say, here, try 10 milligrams of THC in the morning when your pain starts milligrams of CBD two hours later. They're doing it in California. And when, and when they do this prescription kind of thing, this one-to-one, -one, one at, at one hour here, Two hours later there, they're seeing tremendous effects. All types of studies on, on nerve pain, on broken bones, on cancer. Um, so, you know, uh, uh, I guess what I'm saying is the, the world that we're living in with THC and CBD, one is, you know, completely natural from, from, from hemp and, and everyone's taking it and you can't make any claims. And then the other side, the dispensaries are just growing very, very high THC and they're making medical claims about the word cannabis. The word cannabis has 600, five, 600 meanings because of all, so what is, what is actually the medical thing? The way we're going to, where we're going to go is, is when doctors can get involved and say, marijuana, CBD, do it this way and this way and this way for X result. And then come back. Let me test your blood. Let me test your symptoms. Let me take a look at you. And, and change your dosage. And that's, that's what a true patient is. A true patient is under the care and the, and, the, and the watch of a doctor. And the doctors need to prescribe these things for us to get to that next level of medical, medical excellence. Cool thing is, CBD is natural. It's, you don't need a dispensary. You don't need a card. It's deregulated. The federal government is okay with it now from the USDA perspective. The FDA is about to make a ruling on it for food. It's been descheduled from the DEA. And so far, it helps more diseases and more people in every single circumstance than THC ever did. So the more we stand behind and get behind CBD and, 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 and hemp, I, I think uh, the medical marijuana will flow right behind. I'm interested. Um, that's why I'm really excited to see how the, um, the fallout, not the fallout, but the reaction of the DA rescheduling um, Epidiologs. Um, because for me, it's, uh, I look at it as a good thing. Not only will it allow doctors and 
um, medical professionals to maybe not prescribe, but at least are recommending it and talking more about it. Right. And hopefully this will lead to more of the research. You see DA is actually finally starting to open up to more research now. And, um, and once doctors get involved, I think it's going to be wonderful because I know from the stuff I've been seeing, uh, the future looks really good when it comes to compounding CBD with other medicines. Um, and now, the, um, like you said, uh, the, uh, when it comes to cancer, the, the therapy and see how CBD works with um, the micro mitochondria at nighttime, you know, to help repair the cell. And it's going to be interesting uh, over the next few years. <laughs> Yeah, and we're and we're there. I mean, there's so many CBD brands with so many different types of uh, mixtures. You know, CBD with melatonin, CBD with turmeric, uh, CBD with ginger. Even I've seen, and 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 all these things have such a great, um, you know, combination one two effect. It's like it's like with the avocado. I remember we were talking about an avocado. I ask people this all the time. It sounds, it sounds, it sounds, but you know, why is an avocado so good for you? People go, oh, it's the, it's the good fat in the avocado. It's actually not. The, the acid in the avocado, look, that's part of it. But the acid in the avocado oil has a way of pulling in ascorbic acid so that you absorb more vitamin C and other vitamins. It, mm -hmm. it really doesn't have that many vitamins in comparison to other great vegetables in avocado. It has a way of, of, of you absorbing other things. And that's the beauty of CBD, right? Because once you, once you lower your inflammation in your cells, your cells can relax a little bit and process things like water, food, oxygen, magnesium, calcium, zinc, all the things that you need in nutrition. CBD is sort of a turbo to those things. So it's not a cure for all. It, it, it only works with inflammation, but it works with inflammation in all these different ways, whether it's the brain, which is stress. Um, I was doing an experiment with smoke, right? Uh, you, you take a big hit of THC, <laughs> you cough. You take a big hit of hemp and you don't cough. Why is that? Well, because the CBD is sort of relaxing your bronchioles. So you absorb more cannabis. Um, so many cool things to, 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 to see. Um, it's happening now, right? Um, obviously, there's still some regulations against uh, CBD companies like, you know, God bless uh, Kyle, Kyle Turley. <laughs> I, I love Kyle. He's great. Right. And, and, and man, you know, he's such a, he's such a tough guy, you know, been through so much pain. I mean, he knows and he knows other players. Um, how are you going to argue with someone who sees tremendous benefit from no longer using opiates and painkillers for, like, I mean, some of us hurt our toe and broke our bone. I mean, these guys broke every bone in their bodies throughout their lifetime as their career. And this guy swears by CBD. And, you know, the one thing I can say, I've seen what um, full spectrum can do to cancer. With, you know, I, I like with over like a month and a half period of reducing the, the um, the tumors, um, the polyps, that's like the pears. And so I don't know what it can do, but I'm never going to come around and say, like, CBD fixes all this stuff, CBD does all this, because, you know, the government is one thing, and then people will look at you like you're crazy in another. Um, but I, I know he's going to take that bullet for the community, you know, more power to him. But yeah. um, this is one of the cases where we all know, you just don't go out and say, it, you know, until um, some point in the future when we're able to, but... It's going to be interesting to see where but, we go. You, you, but you just said it, you know, the full spectrum has an effect on polyps and cancer. Why? Because the THC and the CBD are working together. We just talked about it a little while ago in another way, which I still don't know if I always get out to people. But if you enjoy smoking marijuana, you're releasing your anandamide. You're getting rid of your anandamide. You have to build it back up. You can't keep smoking, 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 thinking you're going to feel that way like the first time. It's never like the first time. CBD is like the first time because they, they work together, right? So in order to get THC to work medicinally, you have to have substantial amounts of CBD, whether it's in the plant. And nobody wants to buy hemp from a dispensary. There's no reason to go to a, to a dispensary and buy hemp, right? So the dispensaries know that they have to grow high levels of THC to make it really enjoyable and make it worth $5,000 a pound, which was what they charged. That's not going to change. Their, their business would collapse if they started selling one-to-ones in Charlotte's Web. It's not, it's not needed, right? Yeah. So, so there's this thing, and, and people want the high. So they, they're fighting and politically fighting for marijuana, and they get mad when they're, you know, their elected candidate says, no, he's against marijuana. Why? Because he lost some family to drugs and his sons mm -hmm. and this is and that. And, Getting high can be dangerous for a lot of people, especially alcoholics. So um, you, you, the, the, the message I would say to the cannabis community, enjoy CBD. 
You know, it'd make your experience better. It'd make your medical experience better. If you don't believe it, ask millions of us. We'll tell you <laughs> every day. Oh. And uh, it's, a, it's a great thing. Next thing, this, next thing that's going to happen to prove how, how, how powerful CBD is, is you're going to see it in food very soon. Very soon. The smartest cannabis, the smartest cannabis advice I can give to anybody um, you're listening, <laughs> hopefully you are, is get into the food industry. Okay. It's not nominal to say cannabis is food and food is medicine. It's no. true. Cannabis is food and food is medicine. And so you don't put uh, unnatural, you shouldn't put unnatural food in your body, even if it's made with natural elements in unnatural light, it's unnatural. That's not the way nature made it. Hemp is natural cannabis. If you'd like and enjoy the medical benefits of cannabis, you'd be amazed at what you can do with hemp. You can soon eat it. You can rub it all over your body. You can tincture it. Uh, you can wash well, with it. <laughs> with well, it. <laughs> I don't know how you feel about the washes, but-, but I've uh, never tried I, it. I've never tried <laughs> it. Which one, which one is that? Yeah, so we, um, we do a body wash. So everything we do is isolate based. Right. So, uh, you know, we make gummies, we make washes, uh, vapes, even our oils is all all isolate. Right. Pure, pure, pure isolate. And and the reason why is because you can you can you can use the CBD isolate for almost every single kind of product. Um, again, I just showed you a few. Right. We even have a head pot sauce. Um, but with the with the body wash. This suds up, and this is made with like some essential oils and natural fruits and things like that. Um, but the idea is that you're, you're, when your skin is wet, that's when your skin is absorbing and releasing things. CBD is an antibiotic. We can say that, can't we, Bevan? Yes, we can. We can say that. We yeah. can't say it's an antiviral, but we can say it's an antibiotic. So um, cleaning yourself with CBD has an antibiotic effect. The other thing that it does is it helps, to, it helps to heal skin. So if you have dry skin, now the water and the soap and the essential oils and the CBD will go into your skin. And there's no argument that it won't. This is, um, this is a CBD isolate. Hard to see maybe the lights in the way there, right? That's powder. All right. You know what that is? That is pure CBD crystals. These crystals, there's probably about a million of them onto a little flake that big, which means if you break it up, and it's not water soluble, but it's ionized. It's floating in the water. Okay, can't see it. If you break it up, now you have very, very, very little molecules. You can see your skin pores. They basically, they're basically that big. Okay, so let's say let's say one of your skin pores is that big. This is how big the CBD molecule is. Mm, okay. So how much CBD do you need to put all over your body? Not much if it's in molecular form. So then. Can you tell me when it comes to the, the, the body wash, how is that different from soap? A lot of people say that the soap, um, they don't see any benefit of adding CBD to soap. Um, is there anything that you've seen that's, comes, that's a difference between the, um, the wash and the soap? It's hard to tell. Um, so people are looking for something that they can measure. So in, in this case, this is more for holistic and maintenance of my skin and my face. And my and my eyes and my hair, right? That's the way I look at it, and then it just kind of goes down my whole body. It's not really for pain. I haven't I haven't uh, tried this with anyone with eczema yet, for example. Um, and it's very low level. This is only sixty milligrams, right? So I mean, a couple bucks, and you know, it's all natural oils and stuff. Um, but this will last me in the shower a month. Um, and and what I find is that my hair feels a little better. I haven't lost any hair yet. I know, like <laughs> just turned forty, just turned 40, uh, 45 a few weeks ago. But uh, yeah, it's not the CBD, it's genetics, but um, uh, uh, I feel better. Uh, my face feels better. We know that CBD, because it was antibiotic, um, antibiotic, but more of its anti-inflammatory effects has ways of controlling acne. Now you can take it as a tincture, right? That's good, now it's in your bloodstream. But with hot water and soap, like a, a couple essential oils that we're using here, mostly from fruits, um, and, and the CBD, you're now treating the acne almost every single part of your uh, of, of your skin. So, um, you know, good chance you'll take some CBD, you'll digest it. Most tinctures, bioavailability is somewhere between 7 and 
seven fifteen percent. So here we got a thousand milligrams, one gram. If I ingest this whole bottle, I'm only gonna get uh, <laughs> seven hundred uh, micrograms, right? I mean, <laughs> if you're not gonna get all, all of it, right? So the different types of that, I'm 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 a firm believer in different types of applications. You put this under your tongue, it's going into your glandular system. If you eat it, it's going into your pancreas. And I love pectin. This is made with fruit pectin. So right. pectin is very good for you. Look it up. It has, a, has, a, has amazing holistic properties. And um, I believe that the pectin and the CBD are traveling together through your stomach, going through your liver, touching your pancreas, touching your whole digestive system. And I'm very concerned about my pancreas and my liver. So um, do, I, do I take a tincture? The glandular system not necessarily connected to the liver. I would eat it. So different forms of CBD, different ways. Uh, for stress into the brain, no, 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 uh, nothing beats um, um, smoking. But smoking is not always good for you. So fifteen hundred percent better than smoking. Nice man. Thank you for this chat, brother. I really appreciate it, man. All right, cool. Yeah, I, I, I appreciate know. it. Thank you. Yeah, I love, love talking you know, with you when it comes to um, cannabis. And you know, I'm always learning. Uh, hopefully that you know we you learn something from me as well when we talk. Every day, but, every um, day. But I'm grateful. Yeah, I don't know how you do it, man. <laughs> <laughs> so where can people find you? Um, if they want to get your products. Yeah, www.soulcellco.com. Or just look up uh, Soul Cell CBD. We're on uh, Instagram and Facebook. We might be changing our name from one of our new farms coming up. I'll tell you about that in a little while. But uh, yeah, Soul Cell CBD. You've seen us on TV. See us on social media, and it's uh, soulcellco.com. Thank you, Dan. Thank you, Evan. Really appreciate it. Talk to you soon, buddy. All right.